right, welcome to the Behind the Board on miking a drum set. We're going to be using all the mics we have here to mic up this drum kit behind me. Uh, we're going to explain each mic, what they are, how they work, uh, and what angles we should use with the microphone. So let's get started on that. Uh, first things first, let's talk about this SM57 and this stand. We're using these onstage boom stands. Uh, boom stands are important. They have this extra arm on them right here. Otherwise, you'll get something like this. Uh, so we can't extend it out to a drum, and I'll show you how that works right away. Um, so we want to get boom stands where we're micing up a drum set most of the time. So here we go with this snare drum microphone. We're going to sneak that in onto the snare drum right over there. All right, so I'm in the area, and now I'll just adjust the microphone so that we are reaching the snare drum. And that's all done with these little joints and everything. That's one of the reasons we want a boom mic here. Okay, so I'm pretty close here. I want to get a little closer because I don't want any bleed on this, any microphone bleed. I don't want this snare drum picking up too much of, say, the rack tom. So now I'm real close. I'll tighten it up. And I'm looking good. So there's a few different patterns you could do on this. The more direct you go down on it, the more crack you'll get out of the snare drum. The more flat you lay across it, like this, you'll get a little more like pop out of it. It matters what you're going for. Uh, for right now, let's just get a little bit of the crack out of it, like so. But there we go. That snare drum is mic'd up. Let's move on to the rack tone. All right, so we have these Sennheiser 421s, uh, terrific tom microphones. You could also use an SM57 if you'd like to use that. Sounds good, too. Might need to do a little more EQing with that. But let's sneak this in on the rack tom. So we have another boom stand here, and we're just going to go ahead and sneak that in. Now, say I left it right there, that would be really rough on my drummer, because he'll wind up hitting this all the time. So let's move this back a little bit, so it's out of his way. Give it a little angle, see where the audio is going to come in. And if you take a look at that, it's going to come in the top and the bottom here. So we'll take a little bit of an angle on it. We want to get mostly tom out of that. There will be a little bit of cymbal bleed, but we'll work on getting the cymbal bleed out by doing some manual gating. So that's how you want to do that. And same type of situation. If you want to get it a little more crack out of this, a little more uh, a little more punch, you could go more directly down on it. Otherwise, it'll be a little more uh, roto-tom sounding, boomier if we take a bit of an angle on it. Let's move on to the floor tom. We're going to use the same type of microphone, a Sennheiser 421 again. We'll get this in the roundabout spot of the floor tom. Here we are. Let's adjust the boom stand. We could get a little more angle on this. There we go. We're pretty close. That's the cool thing about these. They just clip in these Sennheiser things. So you have these linked up. Just clip them in and out. Nice and easy. So that's where we want to be. Away from where he's hitting, which is the center of the drum. We're going all the way over to the right a bit. All right. So let's move on to the bass drum. For a bass drum, I'm going to be using this D112 microphone. It's a good mic, has good uh, low end frequency responses. That's what you want for the bass drum. I like to be right outside of the sound hole of the bass drum. Uh, another way of micing this is to get on in there and start feeling out what sounds good inside the drum. You could go more towards the side of the drum if you want it to be boomier, or you could try to angle yourself so you're right where the beater is and get real deep in there. You'll have a real punchy sounding one. But a lot of the sound is coming right out of this hole right here. So you can go right there and get pretty much only bass drum. Some snare will come in through that too, but your bleed won't be too bad if you're right over at the sound hole. Uh, next, we're going to put up the overhead microphones. We're going to be using these Royer 121 ribbon microphones. They're pretty great for overheads. Uh, they naturally kind of take some of that high end out of it. They don't really add a lot of glistening sound uh, that you get from some of the cheaper microphones, uh, so they're a little more true. 
So here we go. We want to get a nice spread on these microphones. We want for him to hit a floor tom and it's coming out of this right one. For him to hit a rack tom, it's coming out more of the left one. So we're going to put them in roundabout positions first. Remember, we're mostly on the cymbals here. We don't want to get a lot of snare or anything, so we're going to angle away from the snare a tiny bit, like so. Let me grab the other one. Now, the beauty of these is they are a matched pair. They were matched at Royer. They go ahead and give you consecutive serial numbers, so they're the closest they could be to each other's sound, uh, made at a very similar time. Uh, I'm not going to be using a hi-hat mic for this session, so I'm going to let this kind of hang over and handle the hi-hat too, angle away from the snare drum a tiny bit, and now we just have to measure that we're in good places on these overheads. Uh, there's a pretty simple way of doing that. So I'm just going to grab a microphone cable and sneak back behind the drum set real quick. And we're going to measure and we're going to measure how far away we are from the center of the snare drum to our overhead microphones. We want them to be equally uh, far away. So equidistant apart, put this down right on the center and let's see how far we are right about there. Let's see how far we are to this one. All right, so we got to move about two inches up or away from the snare, and we'll have <clears throat> our overheads figured out. So I'm going to do that now, just pull this guy back a tiny bit, and we'll be all good to go on the overheads. Great. So you want to do that a lot, especially when you're starting out, measure your distances between your overhead microphones, because you could definitely get that wrong. Um, and cause phasing issues, all sorts of problems. Uh, so we have that set up. Let's go ahead and just set up a room mic, go over the different functions on the microphone as well. This is a Neumann U87. Uh, this would be the front of it. So this is what we'll be using as a room mic. That's one of the really cool things you get when you go ahead and invest in a nice piece of equipment like this. I'll use this as a room mic, I'll use this to mic up uh, acoustic guitars, and I'll use it for vocals. So multi-purpose, even though you spent a bunch of money on it, it was pretty much worth it. Uh, right down here, you have different polar patterns. Uh, it's a little difficult to see, see if we can get in on that. This polar pattern, where it looks sort of like a heart, has one indent, means that it's accepting audio from just one side of it. So if you sang into the back of it, it really wouldn't register, only would register what was going into the front of it. Let's move over to this one. This is going directly back, directly front, and this one all the way over to the right is a circle that's going all the way around the microphone, and that's what we want when we go ahead and do this, because we want to go ahead and hear everything in the room. That's the point of this room mic. So we'll leave it on that. And over here, we have a few more features on this Neumann U87 here. Uh, we have a low cut. It's a low frequency cut. You can turn it on and off just by moving your thumb across it. And we have a 10 dB pad. We can turn that on and off. The 10 dB pad will come in handy if, say, we're micing up the drum set and it's receiving a lot of audio and really blowing up our preamp, making it red line. You throw on that 10 dB pad and you're good to go. Uh, but we have that set up. We'll set it up somewhere in the room that sounds good. You want to know your room, kind of look around the room, figure out where it's supposed to go. For right now, we'll just put it right in front of it and call it a room mic. A lot of guys like to throw these room mics, especially in small rooms, behind the drum set, which is kind of cool. We get a different sound, makes the room sound a little bigger. But very cool, thanks for being with me on this one, and I'll see you on the next one.